Good afternoon, thanks a lot to be there with us for a new Campus France Live dedicated to higher education in France. And today we're going to talk about the field of polymers and their applications and to discover an engineering school, uh, ETEC, based in Lyon, to talk about the school and answer all the questions that you have. I'm very, very pleased to welcome Julie uh, Pontvian. Hi. Hi. You're head of the international relations. Uh, we're also with Benjamin Jones. Hello. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot to be there with us, International Relations Officer. Uh, Johnny, uh, you are also with us. Hello. Hello. You're an alumni. And we are also with Camilla. Hello, Camilla. Hello. Uh, one of the students uh, of the school, you can ask all the questions that you have about um, the field of the polymers and about uh, ETEC. And um, let's begin maybe with a quick video to discover ETEC Lyon. And we will be back just after that. Julie, can you introduce yourself uh, in a few words? Tell us uh, what's your role, uh, what's your position at uh, ETEC? Yes, of course. So I'm Julie Ponvian. I'm the head of the international relations at ETEC. I'm French. I studied uh, and lived in Latin America, and I used to be a Spanish uh, teacher before joining ETEC uh, in uh, last May. Benjamin, same uh, question for you. Okay, so um, I'm American. I came to France to study a little over 10 years ago. I ended up staying, changing cities a few times. Um, and so now I've been at ETEC for about six years. And um, I help our French or international students go abroad. And I help international students come here. And I teach English as well at the school. And Johnny, can you tell us your word about um, what you did at ETEC? Uh, I'm Lebanese. I come from Lebanon and I did a BS in chemistry in Lebanon before joining ETEC to do my f- uh, master's degree in uh, formulation engineering. And uh, I work in Le Mans in France now with a company uh, called Collart that does fine art paints. Okay. And you, Camilla, what's uh, your background? Well, uh, I am from Costa Rica and I started my chemical engineering studies back when I lived in Mexico in 2018. And in 2020, I joined ETEC for my formulation chemistry degree. And now I am a last year student at ETEC. Julie, I just told earlier, ETEC is an engineering school. Can you explain explain us in a few words what you what you do? Yes, of course. So uh, ETEC Lyon is an engineering school um, based in Eculi. We are working in the fields of polymer chemistry, and uh, we have a school created and supported by professional federation and industrial companies. 
our school uh, was founded over 100 years ago and uh, we are very lucky because we are living in Lyon. It's a beautiful city. We have a lot of international students and in general, our international students uh, enjoy living in Lyon um, because it's a very dynamic, dynamic city. Uh, we are only two hours from Paris, two hours from Switzerland and uh, we have a lot of industrial companies in the region. And what are the different majors that uh, you offer to your students? We have four uh, majors. Uh, the first one is uh, formulation chemistry. So in this specialty, our students can learn about uh, uh, different areas such as adhesives, inks, paints and cosmetics. We have a second um, specialty, which is plastic materials. In this one, our engineers master all plastic processing technologies and machines. In the third one, uh, which is textile materials, uh, the engineers will uh, follow the development of products from conception to organization of production. And in the last one, the laser specialty, our engineer will um, focus on transformation of raw skin into leather by completing various type of added value. And actually, we are the only engineering school in France to offer an engineering degree uh, on, the, on this major on laser. Mm. And Benjamin, can you tell us maybe a few words about uh, the different programs that you have for the students joining the school? Yeah, sure. So we have a few programs today. We're really just going to focus on the engineering degree. So um, it's a three-year program that's accessible to students, whether they're French or not, that who have already completed at least two years of chemistry. Uh, we'll talk about that a little later, exactly what they need to have studied. Um, and so basically, they start off with parts where it's general chemistry, and they go really into the specialty. Um, and the entire degree you can learn in French or in English. So mm. it's not just some modules in English, it's entirely English taught if you choose that track. Mm. And what level of, Fr of uh, French or English is required to join the uh, ETEC? Okay, so on the European scale, you need what is called a B2 in the level you'll study in. So if it's in English, uh, we actually just assess that through the interviews we do. If you have test results for any particular test, that's good and it helps your file, it helps your application. Um, and by the end of the degree, you need a B2 in the other language. So if you study in English, you'll need the B2 in French. But living in France with the French classes, being more or less surrounded by French students, it always works. And obviously, the French students, they need to learn English, so you can help them with that. Mm. And that's a, a cool way to exchange with them. Um, Julie, what are the different accreditations that um, you take uh, have? Uh, our school is, accredi is accredited both in France and abroad. The majority of our students um, choose to um, work in France, but some of them also decide to uh, live and work uh, abroad. Uh, we have a lot of students who are currently working in the United States, in Spain, in Italy, in Switzerland, and in Canada, just to say some uh, examples. Mm. Uh, Johnny, there are a lot of engineering schools in France. Uh, why did you choose particularly uh, to study at uh, ETEC? Um, it, was, it was purely by uh, chance. I, uh, when I wanted to, uh, to, to study abroad, well, when I wanted to continue my, my studies, I wanted to study abroad, so I just typed uh, chemistry ma masters Europe and uh, on the website ETEC was like the third option. I went to the website, I saw the video, uh, another video that uh, that uh, explained uh, the industry and uh, the programs and what they did. I, find it, I found it nice, I applied, I got in. The rest is history. <laughs> so that was thanks to Google and all the algorithm. Um, for you, Camilla, what was uh, um, maybe the different things that interested you in the idea of studying uh, at ETEC? Well, for me, it was a bit different than Johnny. Uh, I started my chemical engineering degree in while I was in Mexico at the Autonomous University of Nuevo León. And in 2020, I had the opportunity to come to France with all of my family. And so I searched for a school that would allow me to continue my chemical engineering degree with a formulation um, specialization. So I found uh, ETEC through the Campus France platform back in uh, Monterrey and uh, I applied. And so uh, I eventually ended up in the formulation major. So that is why I chose ETEC. Hmm. Um, as you said, uh, Benjamin, we are going to focus on the engineering programs. Um, how are the three years organized uh, in the school? How does it work exactly? 
Okay. So yeah, um, so like I said, it's a three-year program, so I'm going to try to give a rundown of each of the three years. We'll talk about the other aspects, study abroad internships later, but just for the academic part. So in the first year, uh, students will really follow a common core curriculum, which is really strong in physics, mathematics, chemistry, specifically chemistry applied to polymers, which will kind of prepare them for what will come after. Um, in the second year, they'll start their master's, sorry, excuse me, they'll start their um, specialty. So like we said, formulation, textiles, leather, or um, plastics. Um, so raw materials, formulation, confection, implementation, production, it really gets much more concrete uh, alongside the research products, which are projects which are also really based on their specialty. In parallel to all these other specialty classes, all the students follow you know, the soft sciences, so social sciences, economic, environmental, accounting, sustainable development, HR. Because um, what we like to remind students is that an engineer is not one profession, it's a degree that gives you access to many other professions. You have to be well-rounded, so having the scientific background uh, is necessary, but having everything else is what we give them as well. So around a third of the classes are actually that. Okay. And uh, um, Julie, um, do your students have mandatory academic exchanges? Yes, yes, indeed. The um, first uh, semester of the second year, the, our students have to go abroad. It's a mandatory exchange program. They can choose uh, to go to Spain uh, at UPC, Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya. They can uh, also go to Croatia in, at Zagreb, uni in Zagreb uni at Zagreb University, and they. Uh, can go to um, Portugal, uh, to Atlantica University as well. In general, um, our students enjoy uh, spending time abroad because uh, it's a big opportunity for them to spend time in a different country, to discover another culture, to um, develop some inter intercultural skills and to uh, get to know a different way of, of uh, teaching and uh, studying in abroad. Abroad. It is uh, uh, the um, academical perspective, but there is also the professional perspective uh, with the internship. How does it work, uh, Benjamin, the internship uh, in the school? Okay, so like we mentioned, um, internships and what we're going to say several times is we're really linked to industry. So we do three internships in three years. So at the end of the first year, students, they go abroad to another country. If students are already foreign, they can stay in France or they can choose to go to another country as well. And that's uh, to work on language, to do a first professional experience for those who haven't. The technical requirements are a little less. In second year, it's a two to three uh, month internship, which will be in the specialty. Um, so that really gets your foot in the door in a company. You learn a lot about just how that works. And then in third year, it's a six year, sorry, six month internship. So by the end of that, you've basically had a full on exp professional experience. That means that when you graduate, a lot of times students will stay in the same company or they'll have a really big working experience to put on their CV. Um, so there's the internships, yeah. Mm. We've just seen, uh, Julie, in the little video, a lot of uh, laboratory, a lot of experiences. Uh, what is the balance between practical and theoretical courses in the um, e tech? Yeah, so um, at e tech courses in first year are mainly theory based with around 10% of the curriculum dedicated to analytical chemistry lab work. The student follows the same ratio during the first uh, semester of the second year with polymer science and synthesis lab work and um, however for the specialization semester that is to say the second semester of the second year and the first semester of the third year the last year the number of hours of practical work increases to almost 25 uh, percent hmm. um, maybe Camila you can describe us uh, some of the classes that you have and maybe tell us uh, what your favorite is uh, well, as uh, Julie has mentioned, in the beginning, we have very theoretical classes, which are related to the engineering side of the major. However, I think my favorite classes have started after the second year because they are directly related to the formulation path. And more specifically, I really liked the cosmetics classes because they uh, included makeup products, hygiene products, and skincare products. And we get to see the raw materials, the theory behind how each product uh, works. And uh, finally, we get to apply them in the uh, laboratory. So we get to produce um, what we saw in class theoretically. And uh, I think it's, it's very fun. 
Mm. Uh, now that you're a professional uh, Johnny, maybe you could tell us uh, which one of the classes that you had the opportunity to follow is the most important for you in your daily professional life? Uh, I think everything that has to do with uh, lab work is very important because uh, uh, ETEC is a, is a school that really orients towards the industry and everything that is industrial. So. Um, Uh, when we start work, uh, we immediately ha we immediately start working. We don't need like any sort of training to teach us on how to use the paint equipment. Like I'm talking about paints because this is where I work. But uh, since all the measurements, all the materials, everything that we've seen, or we have seen at ETEC, we can just start immediately working. So everything that is related to lab is very important. Mm. Um, we've just talked about the different academic changes, about the internships, but is a professional world um, um, inside the, the, the project and inside the different courses Uh, Benjamin, how does the student work? Do the students work uh, with the professional world during their studies? Okay, so other than the internships which are outside of the school, within the school um, they do research projects. So some of them are proposed directly by uh, companies actually. They, they contact the school, they say we want your students to work on this because we know you have the equipment, your teachers know how to sort of uh, or organize them and supervise them. Um, and so essentially they're working on some of the subjects that they will be working on later in their professional life. Mm. Uh, for you, in your case, uh, for instance, uh, Johnny, what was uh, your research project about? Uh, my research project was uh, was unfortunately not part of the industrial uh, uh, the industrial uh, part that uh, companies get to school, but uh, I worked on <coughs> sorry I worked on uh, decreasing the I, the amount of titanium in the paint. Uh, titanium dioxide is a pigment, is the white pigment is very costly, it's very uh, polluting, so uh, decreasing is very interesting. And uh, through this final year project, uh, I got the chance to do my final internship because it had to do with the same, it's, it was the same subject. So I got to extend my final year project through my internship and I continued working on the same project using the same materials for a company. Mm. So that was great. Mm. Uh, we've just said earlier, Julie, um, that it was uh, possible to study uh, both in French or in English. Mm -hmm. uh, but is it possible to learn French during the program? Yes, uh, obviously, uh, our international students have a French language every uh, classes, sorry, every week. And by the end of the of the program, by the end of the degree, they have to validate a B2 level. But um, I want to say to them, do not worry, because given that you are going to be living in Lyon, uh, I think it will be quite easy for you to improve your French and to validate this level, B2 level. Mm. It was your case, Camilla, you had the opportunity to follow uh, uh, French uh, classes? Yes, I did. Uh, once a week, I went to this uh, other university, which is also in Lyon. I uh, took the public transportation, so it was very easy for me as a foreign student to go to my French classes. I had one and a half hours uh, per week and it was really great because the teacher is a person who's prepared to receive uh, international students from all uh, backgrounds. So her classes are very dynamic and we get to learn more the professional French and also the daily uh, French, which is, I think, uh, different. And also, as uh, Julie has mentioned, uh, I think I improved my level of French by getting along with French students and uh, just living uh, in a French environment. And in the end, I validated my language with a C1 level. So it is a, a great program. If you're joining us on Campus France Live, thanks a lot to be there with us. Uh, we're discovering a French engineering school ETEC, and we're talking with some members of the school to discover more and to let you know more about the school. You can keep on asking all the questions that you have on the uh, different chat sections. Uh, all the team of the school is here to help you understand and maybe uh, begin your admission process. Regarding admission, uh, Benjamin, what academic background do you require? Okay, so I'll break this down into two answers. One would be the way to enter in the first year to the full three years, which would be the most classic route. So basically, you would need to have studied chemistry. Um, so either a full bachelor's or licence in the French-speaking world or licenciatura in Spanish-speaking world, something like that in chemistry. So either you just have at least two years or three or you have the full degree, okay? Um, and if you want to enter in the second year because you have more studies, for example, you already have three, four, five years, that's also possible. 
you would maybe need to be a little more special specialized in chemistry of polymers or material science. Um, just as a note, if you're applying into second year, you will not use the Etudes en France uh, procedure. You will apply directly. But these are questions you can contact our admissions department and we'll help direct you to the right way to apply. Mm. And then, Julie, what are the different steps to apply to one of the programs? Yes, yeah, so the first step uh, is to apply through the Etudes en France platform by selecting ETEC and then in parallel to the EEF procedure or the Etudes en France procedure, we will ask for similar documents to complete uh, your application. Following this, an interview will be organized with Kin Osworth, which is the head of uh, the English engineering courses, and then your application will be presented before an admission committee. And what is the calendar to apply? Yeah, so the, the calendar, um, just to, to give you a, a guideline. So application open mid-January, then you must gather all the necessary documents between January and March. Then you will have an interview between March and uh, the end of May. And uh, you will be notified one month later at the latest if you have been accepted or not. And if you have been selected, um, you will be eating French cheese and red cheese during uh, September because September is the start of the academic year in France and at IDEC. Okay, so that, that will be uh, the, the program for the beginning. Um, what are you exactly looking, uh, Benjamin, uh, inside the different application forms? How to know uh, that uh, we're eligible to this program and that we have our chance to get accepted? Yeah, so in terms of what uh, a good application will look like, uh, let's start on an academic level. That's pretty basic. So in chemistry, at a pretty strong level, because it's really the basis of everything we do, ideally 80% or equivalent uh, sort of for your grades, okay? Uh, strong basics in physics and math as well. Maybe not as important as the chemistry, but somewhere around 70% or higher would be good. Obviously, if you're not sure about your system, well, that's something we can see. Uh, if you have previous work experience, whether it's internships or actual jobs within chemistry or knowledge of polymers, even if it's just from your own personal research, that's obviously a plus. So uh, based on your personal research and your personal motivation, the motivation is an important aspect. We do an interview for every single student, even French students, when they apply. So to have a coherent sort of uh, reason, uh, showing that you know a little bit about what we study and what industries it can lead to. You don't have to know everything. That's why you discovered the school. But uh, showing uh, that curiosity and also just the willingness to come abroad and, and, and be ready for that would be important. And then the last element, which I mentioned already, which was the language. So if it's to study in English, to have um, a B2. And if you're not from Europe and you don't know what a B2 is, if you can understand us right now, I'm sure you have a B2, okay? okay that's <laughs> perfect. Um, for you, Camilla, how did your application process go? Was it stressful or was it kind of easy for you? Um, well, I applied during the COVID-19 pandemic, so it was kind of stressful, but it was... Um, easy in the way that I applied through Campus France in uh, Monterey. So the person who helped me throughout my process was very uh, attentive and they were always giving me uh, a heads up on what was going on with my application. I also had to do a motivational interview. I had to send papers from my school in uh, Monterey. I had to send my grades. I had to send um, uh, recommendation letters and my personal statement. And uh, I think that during my interview with ETEC, it was uh, very nice. I felt very comfortable because they were asking me questions about my own motivations, whether academically or professional. And so I think it was a very smooth procedure and uh, it was easy in the end, I think. Mm. Julie, what would be your advice for the um, people watching us today, maybe wanting to uh, apply in order to have a successful admission? Yeah, just uh, um, some advices for you. So concerning the application form, I will say that um, to have good level in scientific topics, especially in chemistry, but also physics and maths, and make sure your motivation to come to ETEC is coherent. For example, um, if you are a student 
students and applicants with a good understanding of uh, the major of the school and uh, who shows a deep interest on the, this field, then uh, it will be a very good, um, very good, um, very good si sign for the quality of your application. And regarding the interview, I will suggest to prepare some questions to make sure also that the ju jury understands what you've done since the start of your studies, especially if you've done gap years or if you've graduated and are now working. The coherence is the key, the motivation is the key, and uh, you are always welcome with uh, all the staff to explain of your motivation. We are, we are, we are re really here to, uh, to get to know you and to understand your uh, project in France. And once admitted, there is a, another, uh, uh, let's say, another important um, period. It's all the different steps to come to study in France regarding the visa procedure, regarding uh, the accommodation, regarding uh, all the, these administrative steps. Um, how do you help the students uh, to cope to deal with that? With, uh, with that? Uh, well, we have a Mexican colleague who is uh, especially in charge of the incoming students and he organizes several video calls with uh, international students to get to know them better, to understand their needs, to give them all the required documentation. Uh, we also have a professional WhatsApp for international students. We obviously have an international student guide. We organize uh, some orientation and welcome days to um, give all the information to the international students and to ensure a quick and effective integration for them in France and obviously we remain uh, available throughout uh, all the academic year. Mm. How was uh, your student life on campus uh, journey? How would you remember the, the years you spent on uh, campus? Um, it, was, it was great. Uh, I, I, spent, uh, I spent four years uh, in, in E-Tech because I, I did the gap year, so I, I spent a total of four years. And uh, it was it was quite nice. Uh, E-Tech is a very small school. So uh, what's nice about it is that you, you get to know everybody. Uh, we kind of form a small community uh, and you see the same people uh, for the next three years of your life. You develop a s certain bond with them. It's, it's, it's very nice. And uh, there's a lot happening when it comes to student life. Uh, in Lyon, it's a very nice student city. Uh, you, you never get bored. So. Mm, Camila, can you maybe tell us a few words about the events that are organized on campus? What do you do uh, regularly um, on campus? Um, yes, well, regarding the activities organized by the students, there are plenty of them. There is what, uh, in my uh, case in Mexico, we don't have this or we don't have it as organized, I think, as they have it at, in France, which is the, um, the student board. We have it differently in Mexico and in here at ETEC, they are the ones uh, in charge of organizing all of the social related activities. So we have sports activities, activities in the city or activities even in, at school in the afternoons. And regarding the academic uh, activities, we have a lot of opportunities because we get to participate in sort of uh, competitions and hackathons. So there was this one hackathon that was made with the group uh, Chanel group. And for the formulation major, we have the U Cosmetics, which is a cosmetics um, competition where you get to develop a product or you get to improve a, a, a formulation. It depends really on the subject of that year's uh, competition. And uh, there are also many other uh, little activities like conferences and uh, meetups with uh, industrial people. So that is uh, it's very cool. And uh, Julie, do you provide uh, accommodation services? Yeah, we do provide accommodation services. Uh, we are working with cruise residences, uh, which is um, public and cheap uh, residences. And we also are we are also working with private residences. Uh, actually, every year we are booking we are booking a, a lot of uh, room and studio for international students. And we also work with a network of families uh, to help our students to find accommodation. We are very aware of uh, the main preoccupation. 
the main concern of our international students is to find an accommodation. So um, we always try to be very available for them and to reassure them concerning this issue. Besides, some students um, always uh, need re or require um, an accommodation certification, a certificate. So we are sending all the documents uh, to the students to facilitate the procedure and the embassy experience because uh, often uh, it can be a very stressful step for a lot of them. Mm, uh, indeed, uh, Camilla, we know that uh, uh, changing uh, the country you live in, uh, changing the school you're studying in can be a little bit stressful. Did you have some fears, Camilla, before joining uh, eTech and how did it go uh, for you finally? Uh, yes, I think my main fear was the fact that I didn't really speak French when I came to France. I had a very basic level and uh, I feared that my everyday life would be very difficult and I wouldn't get to socialize with people or even uh, get to understand my teachers. But in the end, it, it wasn't the case. I think that at ETEC they are very prepared because most of the faculty members, they speak English. And in, the students also, most of them speak English. And if not, surprisingly, they also speak Spanish. So mostly they are prepared to welcome international students. And I think uh, the only way to overcome uh, my fears at that moment was just uh, mm. get to it, <laughs> just do it. <laughs> No, that's uh, really, uh, really interesting for you, Johnny. Um, now that you are graduated, um, when you remember the four years you spent uh, at uh, ETEC, what would be your best memory, the best moment that you spent uh, uh, in the school? Um, I think I think it has to be the week. Uh, like as as Camilla uh, Camilla said, uh, the student union in France here is a big thing, so they kind of do a whole thing around it. And I think my best time in ETEC was the election week of the student union since I was part of the, one of them. And the election week was just so hectic, so amazing. Mm -hmm. And you add up three exams on that week and then you have like the cherry on top and it was just rushing, rushing from 6 a.m. to 3 a.m. Uh, six days, six days of this week, and uh, passing the exams on top of that. So it was an adrenaline rush all the way through. And uh, if I had to do it, I'd do it all over again. It was one of the best memories I had in eTech. Mm. That's really interesting. We are now going to talk about the professional world because it's not uh, only having good moments uh, when you're studying, but it's getting prepared for the professional world. Uh, Benjamin, we know that um, you're training students in the field that is constantly moving, that is evolving thanks to new technology, for instance. How does it take remain connected to the needs of industry? Okay, so as Julie said at the beginning, ETEC was founded by members of professional federations in the fields we talked about. So it wasn't just the founding 100 years ago, it's also today. So we have our board of administrators, which is uh, represents members from the plastics, the textiles, the formulation, paints, cosmetics industries. So we have those people who help make the strategic decisions about what to teach, strategic orientations, things like that. Um, and another way that we keep up with the needs of the industry is through the internships. When the students come back, they pretty much tell our teachers what they did in industry. Um, and also the research projects that are done from industrial, um, from the industry. So all these ways just to keep um, cutting edge awareness. Mm. And you, you told us um, earlier that um, there is an um, important uh, um, important um, space for the internships uh, with one internship per, per year. How do you help your students to find these uh, opportunities and after that to find a job? Yeah, so the sense will really concern internships and jobs. So there are several events throughout the year. One of them is called just the company day where different companies will come and present what they do, uh, not just in terms of the industry, but also professions, because they realize that there are students who have an idea of, you know, production, research and development, but they really help them understand that. And at the same time, they do recruit for internships. And then another day, uh, what we call job dating, you know, like speed dating, you have a bunch of different interviews with as many companies as you want. There's 40 or 50 companies who come to eTech. Um, and so basically, upon graduation, which is in September, I know in some countries it's more before the summer, but it's in September, uh, around 60% of uh, students already have signed. They already have a job. And all the rest, they find pretty quickly. Uh, one more point about that, we get around 300 internship and job offers per year. We have a specialized site for it. Um, so for those who can't be physically present, they'll send us. So those come from France, of course, but also from companies abroad. Mm. 
Um, Johnny, you're a graduate. Um, can you tell us maybe a few words about um, your end of studies uh, internship and about the fact and the way it could have been helpful for you uh, to work where you're working now? Uh, it has to come back to what I mentioned, just the fact that uh, in I'm talking about my personal experience um, in the paint industry, the, the machines, the tests, everything, they, they kind of come back. So whether it is uh, industrial paint, car paint, it's, it's the same disperser, it's the same uh, grinder, it's the same everywhere. So if you get to start using the material, do the tests and uh, all the quality insurance that come behind that, and you have experience in this, when you want to start working, uh, you won't have this buffers, buffer time to uh, have someone to train you, you're going to be operational very quickly. Uh, this is very interesting for companies and it's also very interesting for you to, 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 to start in your active life as soon as possible. Mm. And you had uh, a lot of opportunities uh, when you graduated, you decided to stay for instance in France? So. I did decide to stay in France. Uh, I did apply for a lot of jobs and I, I went where I want, where I am now because it's the best one I liked. Um, apart from the jobs uh, from ETEC, uh, they gave me the opportunity to do a lot of other things uh, like the gap year. I did a gap year between my second and third year in the Netherlands. Uh, that was solely through the, um, the connections of ETEC because they take um, they take interns internship for interns every year from uh, from the same from the from the school. Uh, I also got the chance to apply uh, for Apple in uh, in the United States. Unfortunately, I didn't get accepted, but another person from ETEC did. <laughs> but uh, I, I got a, I got a lot of chance a lot of a lot of a lot of opportunities to do a lot of things from e in ETEC uh, the, through their connections, and uh, it helped me uh, greatly in in my search and in my professional life. Mm, but Benjamin, when uh, a student has that much opportunities, uh, sometimes it's good to have a place to talk uh, about the career, about uh, what we want to do. Do you have uh, this kind of place uh, at ETEC and do you have advisor to help you uh, see more what you want to do? Yeah, in terms of navigating all these possibilities, one of the best resources for uh, a student will be his actual scientific teachers. Since almost all, or maybe all of our scientific teachers also do vocational training in companies, so they go to companies, they do one, two day programs about how to do something, they know the companies, so they have a good idea about sort of the landscape of what companies work in our, um, our fields, as well as in third year especially, there are different workshops around uh, presenting candidatures, Um, CVs, things like that. Um, and plus just the network, as, as Johnny was saying, um, we get a lot of offers that come straight to us. So we pass them along to the students. Uh, if they need something more tailor-made, they come see us. Um, mm. So a lot of networking, that's uh, really important when you have a school with uh, more than 100 uh, years of, uh, of, uh, of uh, existing. For you, Camilla, what uh, will be the next steps? Uh, I think that you're going to, to begin your uh, end of studies internship. Yes, that's correct. Uh, I will start in the next, uh, in, an, in two weeks, actually. I'm doing my internship at a Japanese uh, company. It's called Shinetsu but they have a small laboratory here in Lyon and I'm going to be working in uh, the development of cosmetic formulas and improving formulas and uh, also with the raw materials that they already developed at the company. And how did you find this uh, opportunity? Was it uh, thanks to the network of ETEC? Yes, it was uh, sent by one of the teachers which, who, is, who is responsible of receiving and managing all of the offers from uh, companies. She normally sends us the, um, the applications or the offers that are more relevant related to our uh, specialization. So for example, if I would have been uh, in the polymers uh, specialization, I would have gotten another opportunity from another company. Uh, but since I'm doing formulation, normally we get up, um, offers from uh, companies for adhesives, paints, raw materials and cosmetics. And what are you plan planning to do after that? Uh, staying in France, uh, moving internationally? Do you already have a, a, an idea of uh, what will be your life after graduating? Uh, I would like to start my first two years after graduating in France. I would like to stay here since uh, my main focus is cosmetics. I think that France is the, the great place to do that. Uh, all the big companies are here, so I want to get to work in the research and development departments. Otherwise, quality control uh, would be very nice. 
And I think that uh, the background that we get here uh, really specializes us to do both of those things. Uh, later, I think that I am capable of trying other opportunities abroad, maybe in other countries in Europe. But for the moment, I think I would like to stay in France. Yes. Mm. Uh, Julie, what are the different job opportunities that uh, students can have? Uh, plenty, plenty. Yeah, I think that we have seen that our students have a lot of uh, opportunities uh, because there is a strong link with uh, companies. Uh, so companies that recruit interns and graduates are from sectors like luxury, uh, such as Louis Vuitton, Hermès, Chanel for leather and textiles, highly technical sporting goods companies, uh, for example, Decathlon, Adidas, automotive and aerospace companies such as Forestia, Excel, Safran, Tesla, Airbus, Stellantis, uh, which is the name of the company uh, that owns the most famous automotive companies in France, paints and coatings manufacturers such as uh, Axo, Nobel, uh, like Johnny said, uh, Sherwin, William, PPG, and uh, cosmetic brands uh, such as L'Oréal and many other smaller companies in France and abroad. Mm. We are now reaching the end of uh, this live session, but before leaving you, I would uh, have uh, uh, one last question for you. What would be your advice for the international students planning to come to France and to study uh, at ITEC? Let's begin with uh, you, Camilla. What would be your last advice for them? Um, to really know your motivations and your objectives for the future and to learn how to be very organized, to work around uh, a certain schedule and uh, to never let your fears stop you. And how would you describe uh, ITEC in three words? Um, I think challenging, creative and demanding. That's really, really interesting. Joni, uh, same question for you. Uh, first of all, what would be your last advice for the people watching us today? Um, it would be uh, to be prepared to enter the administration, the administration of France, like the, all the administrative uh, it's yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because it's, it's really true. Yeah. Uh, you, you, do, you do have a lot of administrative work to do and you have to be prepared for it because uh, a lot of them are new. A lot of them you can seem very useless, but they are very useful, I, especially for the future. And ETEC in three words would be uh, an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> okay, that's really interesting. Lots of ups and downs, mostly ups. Okay. That was cool. <laughs> Not of work. Uh, Benjamin, what would be your last advice for the people watching us today? Well, I would really just say um, go for it because when I came to France too, you have to be a little aware that things are going to be different. But you look at every challenge as just something different and you have to say, oh, this is something if I did in my own country it would be boring. But since it's in France, it's fun. Mm. Um, just be curious and know how to ask for help and know who to ask. At ETEC, that's everyone. If it's not the right person, they'll tell you who it is. <laughs> <laughs> and you, Julie, what would be your last advice for the people watching us today? I would say be positive, be motivated, be creative. Uh, try to prepare your stay in France the best you can. And don't forget that ETEC is a small school, so you will always find some help from ad academic staff or ad administrative staff. And to conclude, I, just, uh, I will just say we are waiting for you and uh, you are uh, going to have a good uh, stay at ETEC. Thanks a lot, uh, um, Julie, Benjamin, Johnny and Camilla for having been with us today. Thanks a lot for having Thank shared you. your point of view on uh, eTech and thanks to you uh, for having uh, watched us. If you still have questions about uh, eTech, uh, you can visit the website and maybe begin all the administration uh, steps to uh, begin a new chapter of your life in Lyon. Uh, thanks a lot for having watched us and see you soon on Campus France Live.